Good morning. We've had this Vivo wind turbine, horizontal axis, 400 watt, installed for about two months now. And I just thought I'd give you guys out there who are searching for information on it a bit more information about it now I've had it up and running a little bit. It is early September 2024 not particularly windy during August and September but I just thought I'd do a short video about the turbine itself what I've done to mount it and the circuitry involved I did a bit of homework beforehand on this system and I found a lot of pretty good videos out there some weren't so good so I'm trying to plug a hole in the gap of information that you potential buyers and maybe even a few guys that have them out there. So the Vivo wind turbine, that's the 400 watt variant. It came with a 30 amp charge controller. And so far when it's windy, it's doing the job. Uh, I mounted it on a 16 foot scaffold pole. Just let me come back a bit. On the side of our summer house that we've built. The only legislation about these wind turbines, I'm speaking UK now, is the bottom of the blade must be higher than 14 foot. So I got a 16 foot scaffold pole. I did a belt and braces on the bracketry. Two large brackets, top and bottom. That's the bottom one and two intermediate Munson clamps, both lined with rubber to stop vibration. There's a bit of garage floor matting on both of the bigger brackets to stop vibration being transmitted to the summer house. An outdoor weatherproof junction box for the three phase AC it generates. The wiring's here behind the fascia board. Uh, I've also got some rubber anti-vibration mounts to further insulate it from any noise the turbine generates. The turbine itself is almost silent when it's very fast wind. There's a slight hiss from the blades, but I took a lead from the yachting type chaps forum and I hadn't insulated the bolts where it bolts to the side of the summer house. So I've got a pack of rubber anti-vibration washers to go behind those four brackets. Might even do an update video when I get the famous round to it. But anyway, 400 watt Vivo turbine. The interesting bit being, I hope for you guys, I was very short on how people wired it in to their system. Now, what I'm going to show you is not perfect. It's my first attempt. I can tell you that I took a lead from all you good folk out there and avoided some of the pitfalls of some of the folk that were less attentive to detail. Before I go in and show you this bit of a control board, I'll just say one of my also top tips is earth your system. Down there poking out the ground is the top of a five foot earth spike that I drove into the ground to earth the system. More about that in a moment. I'll just go in. Bob down a bit. I'm going to put it on widescreen. A little bit anyway. There we go. So, first things first. The three phase AC from the turbine comes in down here. This yellow cable. And the best way to explain this system is, don't take it all in at once, just follow me through. So yellow three phase comes in and this is a charge controller it came with. It's a 30 amp charge controller. It does not matter about the orientation of these leads coming off the turbine and these leads going into the 30 amp charge controller. 
It's basically a posh bridge rectifier, this piece of gear. Think I'll get the initials right. MPPT, moving point something or other. I don't want to get too bogged down in detail. I'm not a boffin. But that turns three phase AC into 12 volt DC. The first thing I put after it is one of these generic power meters to instantaneously let me know what the system is doing. Now then, a bit of glare there, but the top left and bottom right are the instantaneous figures. The rest of it, top right, where's my finger? Top right is the system now stands at 12.3 volt. You can guess it's not been very windy recently. And the bottom left scrolls through what's been happening with the system. Since the last time the power was off, it's peaked at 16.62 amps. It has a low, low voltage VM of 11.57 volts and it's generated 210.7 uh, watts peak. Anyway, so three phase in to the charge controller, through my meter, and then to protect the bottom half of the circuit in case that charge controller throws a baby, I put a 30 amp uh, circuit breaker in case I want to work on the bottom half of the circuit to protect myself. Also, furthermore, I've put in a massive 600 amp circuit breaker there, like an on-off twizzler to completely isolate the middle part of the circuit. And as you can see, I've used positive and negative buzz bars for the middle part of the circuit. So to avoid stacking uh, connectors on top of each other and potentially causing heat, I've used a buzz bar. I've got a couple of spare ones because in the future, near future to be honest, I'm going to upgrade it and augment it with solar. Coming down a bit further, we have a 200 amp mega fuse. That's not me calling it mega fuse, that's the company name. And the reason I have a 200 amp mega fuse is the system's batteries, which I'll come to in a moment, power a 2000 watt inverter. So 2000 watts divided by 12 volts is 166 amps. So the nearest mega fuse I could get and that will protect the components and the wires is that 200 amp mega fuse. On to the batteries. The guts of the system. Three 110 ampere hour 12 volt laser batteries wired in parallel. One of the few top tips I've picked up while surfing around is not to have your power outlet go into the inverter from the same battery. So as you can see, I've got the negative from the left-hand side battery and the positive going to the inverter from the right-hand side battery. It would be a mistake to have the negative going to the inverter and the positive from that battery. All the guts and juice will be drawn out of that battery and the other two would just cascade into it this way you share the power load and charging amongst the three batteries. Now then, the interesting bit for some people out there is, cast your mind back to that earth peg, these Remigy inverters, so far it's been working very well by the way, actually have an earth. You can just see under there an earth. And I run the earth away down behind me through the side of the summer house to the earth peg. And also the other earths I put to a terminal block and run earths from that as well for the entire system. So earth your system gents if you're in a summer house. I know it's different if you're running an RV or some kind of on the road van life kind of gear. But yeah that's my system so far. Three phase AC in through a terminal block, 30 amp charge controller. When it's windy, uh, it will put out, I hope, up to 30 amps. Can't see it myself, not with that Vivor. I'm not uh, being detrimental to it, but it's not particularly windy. 
There's my meter telling me what's going on. Top of the circuit protected by a 30 amp circuit breaker in case the charge controller goes mad. I've got an emergency on off for my good self so I can work on the system. And the circuitry is also protected by a 200 amp mega fuse. Might be a little bit overcautious compared to some of the circuits I've seen on telly. But I thought a few guys out there, just going to move back a bit, might want to see my attempt at circuitry. So what I can run off this is I've got a fridge next door in the summer house, a uh, smart speaker, lights. We did stress test it last week. This system with those three batteries ran a washing machine. It ran it through the entire cycle once and we further stress tested it by trying to run it through again. At that point the inverter said uncle enough and it started bleeping at 11 point whatever my low setting was 11.5 volts or something so yeah 11.57 volts so it can run horrendous stuff uh, the double-edged sword with a big battery bank like that is it can last you a long time but then when it's not windy it also takes a long time to charge back up hence my need to augment it during the summer months when the turbine's not doing much with a solar panel Anyway, I'll bob down again. I stood up because my old knees are playing me up. So, there is my system. It's not particularly neat. I tried to get it as symmetrical as possible. I pre-bought the uh, leads pre-crimped and heat shrunk with the correct rating. The twin positives from the battery and the twin negatives from the battery came with the Renergy inverter, rated at 100 amps each. So capable of transferring 200 amps. There's nothing I believe I'm going to run next door that will take 200 amps, but you never know. So, what do you think about that? It's my first attempt. I am going to supplement it with a 100 watt solar kit. And I've also taken the liberty of buying a separate solar charger. I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket and have a charger that can do both. I think Renergy and Victron do a charger that can do both. But that's me so far, the 400 watt Vivor wind turbine. When it's windy, it charges like Bilio. When it's not, you can guess. All I can tell you so far is it works well. When it's windy, it's not noisy, does not disturb the neighbours, I was concerned about that, don't be, but there is an issue of, I'm not going to use the word vibration, harmonics. When the turbine is flat out, there is an unusual, I'll call it a hum, in the summer house. That's my fault for not insulating the bolts against the wood with rubber washers. I'll attend to that. But yeah, what do you think of that so far? I'll take any questions, if you have any, good or bad. Uh, this is my first attempt. All in all, by the way, you might be interested to know how much it cost. Right now, the turbine I've bought, I've just checked, here in the UK. So the turbine and that charge controller is between £105 and £120, depending on where you purchase it from. Uh, all the other bits and pieces, all these wires, and a friend of ours who is an electrician came and checked me out to make sure we weren't going to kill myself and pass us by. So all the bits and pieces, the turbine, the mast, the inverter, wires, the batteries, the batteries were expensive. They were £240 total for the three. But long story short, dear viewers, everything you've seen here today, turbine mast, inverter, charge controller, meter, Circuit breaker, emergency on off, mega fuse, terminal blocks and battery, £600. Now, obviously I'm not looking for a return on that anytime soon. But I can tell you that I'm happy that we can produce power and be off grid. Let me stand up, my old knees are playing up again. 
So there you have it. I'll take any questions at any time. Head rush. There's a turbine. Pretty idle and it's got to be going pretty fast to generate upwards of six amps. But yeah, I might even put this on the man cave group that I'm in. But I hope it was helpful to some of you. See what you think. Happy to answer any questions. So eBay, turbine and charge controller came from eBay. The instantaneous meter was Amazon. The short cables, red and black, and the buzz bar connectors came from eBay. And the mega fuse came from Amazon. Batteries were from eBay. But yeah, this is my humble offering. See what you guys think. I know a lot of people don't spend a lot of time looking at the circuitry. I hope this has given some people some ideas of where they've gone right. Or maybe wrong. See what you guys think. Let me know in the comments or just uh, have a look at my other videos. They mainly travel. We get around quite a bit and quite like the off-grid idea of this summer house. All right you guys and girls, let me know what you think. Maybe hear from you soon. Bye.